the reason we, we ended up looking at swathing uh, was because we wanted a higher quality grain product and I wanted higher quality straw. If we wait until the straw is dry enough to co direct cut combine, usually the grain is actually almost over dry. We'll have some losses in the field or we'll have late season weeds starting to come in. Uh, I would prefer to swathe because it lets me cut them almost two weeks earlier than I would direct cut. And so I can swathe it, lay it in the ground for three or four days and then pick it back up and combine that product. It's already gone through what they call a sweat. So it won't have to be put on air. Uh, usually the crop is more uniform in uh, moisture content. Uh, the straw quality is usually a little higher because you've cut it while it was still more, well, there was still a little life left in it. And so it dries down closer to like hay. And so that the, it holds itself together better as it goes through the combine, it comes out the back end, you've got nice long pieces of straw that bale easily and make really good straw bales and excellent bedding. So I, I, I'd like to swathe, but in Iowa in July, it rains so much that swathing is really risky. Uh, this year, last year, like I said, we got burned a little bit because we swathed looking at the forecast and the, the meteorologist missed it by like a day. And instead of having all our grain up and off the field, it rained on my swaths, which made it a real problem to try and get them to dry down enough to combine. We lost grain in the field and, and it wasn't good. But that happens, that's farming. You know, nothing's ever perfect. The next field we did, we just direct cut and that worked okay. But I had to wait longer to direct cut that ground. So then I had late season weeds come in. I had uh, my, my clover underseeding was coming up a lot higher. And so then I had other complications because I had to wait longer to direct cut. So each one has pros and cons and either one of them is perfect. The direct cutting and the swathing, they're both useful depending on what your, your goal is. When it comes time to harvest small grains, there are two options. Directly combine the crop while it's still standing in the field, or cut it with a swather, let it dry in windrows, and then combine those windrows with a pickup or dummy head. Which one works for you will rely on a number of different factors, including equipment availability, weather conditions, and end use of the harvested products. Darren Fair, who farms near Mallard, has done a little of both. We're direct cutting today. We have done some testing. Um, we did some testing this year with swathing um, as well as direct cutting and, and we're finding that there's not a lot of difference between the two. Okay. But we've seen um, swathing, if you've got more of a weed pressure where there's a lot of green material in there, we want to be able to, to come in and swath that and lay it down so we're not trying to run so much through the combine. Um, We've, we had some really good, the nice part about swathing is that it allows the grain to dry down more and then when you're going right into the bin or something, you, you know, you just, you don't have to wait as long for your crop to mature in the field. You're able to swath it, lay it down for a couple days, come back and harvest it and it's ready to go in the bin. So that's nice. The oats are clean, you don't, you don't have a lot of green material because the wetter you combine it, if there's some weeds or grass coming through, a lot of that material ends up in the tank and that ultimately ends up in the bin and that's just a little more of a, a management issue. Now if your oats are, are relatively clean, um, we like direct cutting, it's simple, it's, you know, 
it works well. If you, if you put it in a swath, you're always uh, risking that you're going to have some unexpected bad weather and your, your windrow or your swath is gonna, go, going to sit there uh, in some rain and, and, and wind and, and that type of thing. Um, so if, if everything were perfect and everything was standing just perfectly, uh, I think a lot of us would, would just as soon use the uh, small grain head on our combine. Uh, but if we have conditions where there's a lot of uh, undergrowth um, in our oats uh, or, or our small grains, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to be trying the swather um, and uh, let that material dry out a little bit before we move it through the combine. For me, it works so much better to direct cut it than it does to windrow it because it seems like every time I windrow something, it it rains three inches on it, and then you can't get it dry underneath the windrow. And then you know I've even had it where it's where it started growing underneath the windrow, and you know, and I couldn't because I couldn't combine it, and it just kept raining. Whereas direct cutting, I can you know as soon as it gets halfway dry, you can go out and combine. You know, we're running a draper head here for direct cut. I would say for most, um, not, for, for maybe not everybody, direct cutting will work. We've made the investment in a draper head, which makes the direct cutting process go a lot easier. You know, typically your old swathers, they were drapers as well. An auger head, which is more typical for soybeans, um, makes small grain harvesting a little more difficult. So that's a component. The fact that I have a draper head makes what we're doing today a lot simpler because it creates such a uniform and even flow into the combine. Um, so uh, you, you have to um, take into account what kind of combine you have too, uh, what, what kind of cylinder um, you're operating with. We have an old con concave um, uh, machine. Uh, a lot of the newer axial machines, um, they have to have certain um, certain amount of uh, uh, adjustments and equipment uh, in order to deal with the straw and those are typically aren't available in the mid in in Iowa um, out west for folks who are used to dealing with wheat and uh, on a more regular basis they have the machines suited for that but here it's you have to be a little bit more careful about which machine you're using so this spring we we were able to locate the machine you're seeing here, this is a, this machine is about 20 years old. Uh, it's a, it has a 21 foot wide uh, cutting platform. It's, it's a rubber, it's a pull type uh, rubber belted uh, draper swathing machine. Uh, you, you can, uh, it's not self propelled. You, you just uh, have to hook it onto a tractor and pull it. If there was one, one piece of equipment we had this year that we didn't have last year that we couldn't have gotten by without, it would have been this. Uh, our oat harvest would have been very frustrating, I think, without this machine this year. We windrow all of our small grains ahead of combining. Um, over the years, we've, we've needed the straw for the livestock operation, so we want to harvest as much straw as we can get. So when you're cutting, you know, we're cutting about six. four to six inches off the ground when we windrow. And when you're cutting that low direct cut, you're getting way too much green stuff to go directly through the combine. But by windrowing, you know, we can let that lay and dry. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go through the combine a lot easier that way. Um, and then if you have any weeds or anything, it's, there's, it's not a problem. You just dry them down and you can run them through. So with this swathing machine this year, uh, one thing we, we paid closer attention to was the stubble height that we were laying our windrows on. Last year we had great weather. It really wasn't much of an issue. This year we, we made sure that we had at least a six to eight inch uh, height on our stubble that we were laying the windrows on because we we knew it seemed to be a wetter season and that we might be dealing with some rain and we wanted to make sure that we didn't run into any quality problems with either the grain or the straw if it got rained on 
and we had to uh, let it sit there longer than we wanted to. We hire our windrowing and now uh, we they got a 16 foot windrower and uh, if you've got a good yield it takes a pretty good combine <laughs> yeah. to handle all that material because yeah. when you direct cut you just cut below the head you're not running all the straw through so you've got a pretty huge windrow on a 16 foot windrower and and the total plant going through so it's got to be dry you don't want any wet bunches the swather we got it's a john deere it's a 1984 gas self-propelled um, and it's only 15 feet which is probably better for our conditions here in iowa a lot of swathers that you can find uh, are 25 feet. They're, they're big machines that are used to going through in the Dakotas and, and, and a little bit farther west where there are drier conditions and a larger swath is, is more appropriate for those drier conditions. But for us, you know, with the humidity we have and, and the weather we have, probably a smaller windrow is gonna be more appropriate for our small greens. So I'm glad I found a 15 foot one that I'm gonna give a try. Uh, we prefer a 12 foot, it drives down a lot fact, better. Well, what we've done is we've told the customer operator you can't take a full 16 foot swath. I mean, most of them, they have a GPS on it, so they'll just, you know, okay, we'll take a 14. I'll leave two foot off on the one end as I'm going. He said that. And that worked a lot better this year. Um, the previous year we'd had them, they'd, we just said, go for it, you know. And we didn't realize how much material that was going to be. And, and now we're like, yeah, you guys can just. 14 feet, that's about all we can hand handle. And a lot depends on the height of the crop too, but it's been uh, good straw yields the last few years, so uh, we've had to have them cut less. Timing of small grains harvest differs from crop to crop. Different farmers may be able to harvest at different moisture levels depending on the specifications of their market and their storage capacity. Everyone has their different method for determining when it's about time to go. You look for the oats and the barley to kind of get a dirty uh, brown color. They'll be nice and golden for a couple weeks and then they'll turn to kind of a grungy brown. And that grungy brown is a sign that they're ready and then you can test them. And we try to take them at 14 to 15 percent moisture and put them in an air bin. Well, you go out and, and see how, the, how it shells out and how it comes off, the head comes off and rubbing your hands and, and, uh, and are, the, are the kernels all, have they lost their green tint? Have they all, are they all yellow and, and dry? And then the final test is, is getting a sample and trying to test it. When I, when I go out to the field, I'll shell several heads out and the first test I do is the thumbnail test. If I can cut it with my thumbnail, it's too wet. I won't even worry about it. Um, if I can dent it, then we're getting close. If I run my thumbnail into it and I chip my thumbnail, we're way dry and I should have been in the field a while ago. So, and then of course I'll chew it. Just like we do with corn and soybeans, the, 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 old, the old farmer uh, handful of grain and take some kernels in, chew on them. If they crack or pop, you're, you're pretty close to dry then we'll go and shell enough to put in a bucket and actually take it in and get it tested at the uh, local elevator. And the downside is their equipment, while it's you know new and fancy and it's digital, most of them don't have settings for rye. So we, <laughs> we tested on the, I think we tested on the wheat setting the last time and it's pretty close. Oh, the triticale, the rule of thumb that I use, and I'm, I think I got this someplace, maybe I made it up, but when the heads all of a sudden kind of they're sticking straight up and then all of a sudden they will droop over and that's kind of my clue when they when they turn those heads over i think it's ready to go uh, we harvested our wheat um, in the last week of july uh, and it was at about 12 and a half percent moisture um, it's it's always a new experience when you are checking the timing for harvesting a crop like wheat and it's kind of similar to soybeans in that those humid days in the middle of summer, um, it can pick up some of that dew in the early morning and then in the evening and be tougher to thresh. So you have kind of an ideal combine window of you know late morning through uh, late afternoon or mid-afternoon uh, to harvest that and be able to thresh it well without the grain getting tough. 
uh, or the, the material getting tough going through the combine. Um, so that's, that's one component of, of the thrashing uh, part of it. The other thing about small grains is that they are, well, smaller, and that means that the combining process, whether you're combining them standing or in a windrow, is a little different. Making the right adjustments to your combine is especially important for growers aiming at selling to food grade markets where low test weight and or foreign material in the grain can lead to rejection or significant price docks. Well our goal is always to make food grade quality oats and a portion of that is making sure we have good quality and high test weight so we learn to try to adjust the, the combine settings to be able to allow for preservation of the good quality stuff and let some of the lighter stuff go out. Uh, so a lot of times that's just retesting over and over, trying to validate what test weight we're coming out. Uh, so it's just you know adjusting the combine fan speeds, uh, monitoring what's coming out through the combine and, and making changes mostly with the with the fan. I, I don't really think it should be that hard from a combine from a, a very practical you know just the combine settings. I, I don't think it should be that difficult for most producers to be able to, to come to a, a settings that work well. Turn your air up on your fan. Um, so there's two parts of a combine. One is obviously the, the shelling um, and then trying to separate it effectively. And so that's what we're trying to do is once we get it shelled in the combine is we're trying to separate the, the chaff, the light oats, the fins, and the heavy stuff. And so that's what we're trying to manage. So the fan speed and your sieve settings allow you to kind of balance those and to try to get the heavy oats to stay and blow the, the light oats out the back. Um, I really should be stopping here shortly and, <laughs> and doing a test. Yeah, fan speeds need to spe be sped up, concaves need to be tightened, uh, tighten, tightened beyond what you've ever tightened before if you haven't done small grains. Um, and then of course you need to deal with all your uh, straw and chaff uh, going out the rear end. Uh, most people don't want to chop it, they want to leave that in a windrow so they can, can bale it up into a nice bale. The fan capabilities on your combine, um, you need to make sure you have enough uh, fan to be able to deal with the amount of residue you're pulling through the machine if you're taking the whole plant. Uh, you know, if you're just taking the head of the plant and a little bit of straw, uh, your fan capabilities aren't as critical, but if you're going to windrow the straw out of the back end of the combine, you need to make sure you have enough fan capacity in that machine to take care of uh, pushing that crop residue out of the way and allowing those wheat grains, that those kernels to fall uh, so you can get them into your grain tank. Triticale combines hard, it's, it threshes hard. It's kind of like wheat and uh, I've got cover plates that I have an international combine. Uh, all of this works for any combine, I think, that I cover part of the concave so that it can't just shove that whole head right through the concave immediately. It has to go around once or twice. Uh, and you gotta have the concave up really tight and you gotta have that, the cylinder speed wound up um, in order to get it threshed out. So we, we run a conventional John Deere combine that has a cylinder and a beater in combination for threshing and moving the grain into the the straw walker portion of the combine and we had always run the the height or the the separation between the the beater grade and the beater at the the closest setting because that was what always seemed to work for corn and soybeans and that's what the manufacturer recommended uh, we found the only way to to uh, eliminate the problem of plugging this year was to open that up to the wider setting and it didn't seem to have any negative effects on the threshing capability of the machine and it it seemed to allow those uh, bigger bunches of crop to flow through more easily without plugging the machine. Once you've harvested a quality crop, how can you keep it in condition until it gets to market? Next week we'll talk grain handling and storage with farmers from around the state.